Okay, you might think it's another iPhone mini review after one or two or six months of usage, but actually no. I prefer to be honest with my audience and no matter how well iPhone mini can be, I prefer a bigger model. So my daily driver is still iPhone 12 Pro Max, but especially for this Q&A session, I used iPhone 12 mini for one week and not only like an average user, but as a content creator. And I promise that some facts will surprise you. It's Alex, welcome to the Geek Stable. Let's start our Q&A. For whom is iPhone 12 mini? So this phone has two key things. First and obvious one is its size. People who are in love with iPhone 5 design or iPhone 6 design might like this phone because 10, 10s, 11 and 12 are just bigger. If you go with 12 mini, you won't have to change your daily habits. You don't have to buy jeans with bigger pockets or do finger gymnastics to reach the top of the phone. The second point is the price. People who use older iPhones probably spend 650 US dollars on their phones when they were originally launched. iPhone 12 mini costs 700, which is almost the same. So if you believe that a phone should not cost a thousand bucks, this phone is just for you. But is 64 gigs enough in 2021? A lot of people who want the latest iPhone would consider the iPhone 12 mini and 64 gigs option because it's the cheapest one available across the lineup. So is it worth buying 64 gigs? If you don't use iCloud and you usually buy a phone for at least two years, I'd recommend you to go with the bigger storage option. But if your budget is tight, then well, here's what you'll get. So by default, you're getting around 48.5 gigabytes of free storage and after upgrading to the latest iOS, it becomes 46.9. Then I've uninstalled GarageBand and most of the apps that this phone comes with, well, except iWork and some default ones, and that gave me around 50.8 gigabytes, which is much better. And finally, I've installed all my messengers, maps, Spotify, apps for content creation, and I ended up having 47.5 gigabytes of free storage. Try checking your storage every Sunday to see how fast you'd run out of 64 gigs version. After a week of my usage, I got 13.5 gigabytes left. And I don't even have any games pre-installed. So I saved money once because I bought a smaller option, but now I have to think about the storage for all the years ahead while using this phone. I'll have to offload the apps, I have to use streaming instead of downloading, I have to weekly clean my device from some content and eventually there will be a moment when I'll have to sacrifice something in favor of being able to record something new. So if you can, please go with the bigger version. Otherwise, consider this tiny card reader and a microSD card so you'll have a backup storage just in case. Next one is the battery. Is it good enough? Here's an example. At 10 a.m. I had a charge to 100%. In the next six hours I had a one hour Skype call, two hours of navigation, and during the rest of the time I had music playing, messaging, and surfing the internet a bit. So I ended up with 38% at 4 p.m. And knowing that this is a result of a new device, I assume that later it will drain the battery even faster. If you use the phone for constant video recording, for example, I like to put it in front of my bike to record the whole journey, then expect it to die after three hours of usage. But here's the thing, if you're using an iPhone SE or iPhone 7, then I'm pretty sure that you're used to charge your phone quite often, so switching to the 12 mini will keep you in the same rhythm. Thanks to the MagSafe, you may now get a fancy power bank that will attach to the phone magnetically and charge it wirelessly. This one is actually even bigger than the phone itself. And this leads us to the next question. How fast will it charge? I've just showed you the power bank that uses MagSafe and I really like this technology. I bought the original MagSafe charger and a stand for it and they were great, but I should aware you that according to Apple, the peak power delivery for iPhone 12 mini will be only 12 watt compared to the 15 watt for the rest of the lineup. They simply don't want this small guy to overheat. You can get it charged in an hour and a half via lightning and add an extra hour if you charge it via MagSafe. It's not blazing fast, but compared to the Qi charger, it's a great improvement. If you wish to see how it stands compared with the rest of the lineup, I did a separate video on that, so feel free to check it out later. Now let's go with the creative stuff. 
Is it good for photo creation and photo editing? I'm a huge fan of the portrait lens that iPhone 12 mini lacks, but the other two lenses are the same as in 12 and 12 Pro, and they are amazing. This is how much space each photo would occupy, so you can understand how much space you might need. Note that raw photos can be shot only on the main lens and only using a third-party app. And it won't be that fancy Pro Raw which the Pro iPhones have, so I ended up using the Pro camera as my main camera app. It supports a lot of formats and it provides a comfortable UI with all settings just around you. For editing I use Darkroom and I really like the way they use the small screen of the 12 mini. So I usually edit vertical photos in the horizontal mode and horizontal photos in the vertical mode. And in both modes you'll have enough space for both the picture and the tools. So if you wish it to be your go-to camera, it can be one. Now let's move to the audio. Is it good for audio creation and audio editing? The quality of the internal microphone is decent. You may use it for podcasting or doing some interviews or recording voice memos. And it's actually much better than in many flagships, but of course you shouldn't use it in a noisy space. Also 12 mini doesn't have an audio jack, so you'll have to use one of the adapters. And here's a quick guide on them. If you're using one of the USB microphones for recording and you need to hear yourself in the headphones, then you can use the USB 2 adapter and no need to buy a more expensive USB 3 one. Unfortunately, this configuration won't work for calls due to the iOS limitations, so this won't work for Zoom, Skype or Clubhouse, for example. But I usually use my MacBook with a pair of headphones to participate in a call and the iPhone does a backup recording in case of a podcast. If you wish to use an audio jack adapter, I highly recommend the original one because the one I bought from some Chinese shop simply doesn't support voice input, only the headphones. When it comes to editing, my favorite tool is Ferret Studio. It's great if you need to edit a podcast on the go. And even on such a tiny screen, you can have up to three tracks visible at the same time. So it should be enough for an average interview. My favorite feature is stripping silence that would replace the silence between the phrases with just blank pieces that you can trim later. Now let's move to the video. Is it good for video creation and video editing? Making the videos is the most storage and battery consuming activity and of course the bigger is the screen the better. However 12 mini is perfect if you use it on a gimbal. First of all there are no balance issues and also since the phone is light Gimbal's engines don't work that extensively, so the battery lasts longer. For recording, I use the default camera app that can even record HDR video in 4K30, but I disabled that feature because on the third-party devices it just looks ugly. You can also record 12-bit video in Filmic Pro if you are into color grading, but please note that one hour of such recording might eat up to 16 gigabytes of your storage. For editing, I used LumaFusion and this is the first time I felt that the screen is simply not enough. LumaFusion has some predefined layouts, but none of them felt like comfortable. But actually, the previous video on my channel about the bokeh videos was fully edited in LumaFusion on this iPhone 12 mini. The screen was too small for me, so I felt like I need something better. Which leads us to the next question. How to turn 12 mini into a computer? So, in order to edit my previous video on this small guy, I decided to connect the phone to the external screen. We can use this lightning to HDMI adapter to make it work, and LumaFusion can actually output the video to the screen while the timeline will remain on the phone. This may be useful because it splits the workflow, like the viewfinders on the screen, and the timeline is in your hands. I also tried the same with a non-original adapter. It's five times cheaper, so I saved a lot, but in this case, LumaFusion could just mirror the phone screen. So be aware when buying a cheaper cable. Then I thought, okay, LumaFusion supports hotkeys, so I'd attach a Bluetooth keyboard. That was easy, so then I decided to connect a mouse. It should be any Bluetooth mouse that is not from Apple. In order to make it work, open Accessibility, then Touch, then Assistive Touch, enable it, and go to the devices. From there, you can connect your mouse, and then let's hide this annoying on-screen button. And here we are. So now we can use the phone's power without even a need to look at the screen. So in case your laptop is super old and can't edit videos, your new iPhone 12 mini could be a nice alternative. 
Of course, it requires some practice, but if you need such a use case, this phone is more than capable. So should I buy iPhone 12 mini or any other model? If you don't want a bigger phone and it has to be an iPhone and you're okay to charge it once or twice a day, then this phone is just for you. If you're limited in cash and you're choosing between the iPhone 12 64 gigs and the iPhone 12 mini 128 gigs, then check your current phone screen and storage first. If you're happy with the big screen and 64 gigs, go with the iPhone 12. But if storage is more important to you than the screen, go with the iPhone 12 mini. And as always, I welcome you to share your thoughts and ask your questions in the comments. And don't forget to hit the like if you enjoyed this video. It's been Alex and see you at the Geek's Table. Bye-bye.